And a good Monday morning, Eagle Nation. Well, what do you know? We get to talk about an upcoming Eagle game for two more weeks. Yes, you got your Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365, and we will spend the next two weeks trying to help you guys get ready for Eagles Chiefs in Super Bowl 57 after a blowout win against the San Francisco 49ers. Two straight playoff blowout wins, as a matter of fact. Uh, and they're on to Super Bowl 57 in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, J-Mac, yesterday, both you and I thought the 49ers-Eagles game was going to be close, going to be competitive, come down to the 59th minute. Yeah, it was basically over when it's on. Yeah, sixth, uh, sixth offensive play of the game. Hey, by the way, is this just me? I, I got streaming starts in on the big screen. I see you in the green room, Jody. Am I having technical issues or is are you having the same technical issues? And let um, me know, Tone, but I'll continue. I'm seeing you just fine. Or you're not seeing me at all? or Well, I see you in the green room, in the screen, but my, my large screen in the studio says uh, streaming starts in, uh, in Birth 365, so maybe I'm having that problem. I see you in the green room. I hear you fine. Um, for some reason, so it, it seems to be on my end, so... When we get to the first break, I'll kind of click out okay. and try to get back right. in. But yeah, I just I'm, wanted to make sure. I'm um, seeing you just fine, Johnny Mike. You look good yeah. after that 31 to 7 beat down to the 49ers yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't more, it, it, it wasn't as much as a game as a beat down. Uh, <laughs> coronation, uh, I would I would call it. Yeah, the you know, the Eagles we talked about it with the giants Kyle Shanahan makes the same mistake I know that's dear to your heart Jody I asked Nick Sirianni about it after the game 49ers won the coin toss that's the best thing that happens to the Eagles when they lose the coin toss which they rarely did in the regular season so they go right down the field they score they had the big fourth down conversion now it seems like Devontae Smith didn't catch that football but that's on the 49ers to not challenge that play um, so they're up seven, nothing. And then you say, all right, let's see what Brock Purdy can do. And, you know, we got two first downs and you say, all right, maybe this is going to be a game. Maybe the kid's going to hold up. And I think it was the sixth offensive play for the 49ers. Just they're using a backup tight end for some reason to block Hassan Reddick. And he's just tearing off the edge and, and Brock is, is not aware of what's coming toward him. And you have this play. And ultimately, to the naked eye and, and to the officials, we thought it was an incomplete pass. T.J. Edwards had a chance at, at an interception, didn't come up with it. Um, and, and then as you look at the replay, nope, Hassan got there uh, before. Strip sack, fumble, going the other way. And that's bad enough. You know, with the double positive, the Eagles ultimately didn't take advantage of that. But, you know, then we slowly start to realize, oh, Brock Purdy's not coming back in this game. And, yeah, from that point forward, it was over. It was over. It was – I joked about it on Twitter. It was the 49er it, – it, it was the Eagles versus Navy at, at some point when Josh Johnson left the game with a concussion really beforehand. They were getting Christian McCaffrey ready to play quarterback, um, Jody. So, yeah, it was a disaster in every aspect for the San Francisco 49ers. And, you know, I also joke, the Eagles are the first team in history, according to some critics, that have made the Super Bowl without playing anybody. And I, 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 I've joked to the point, it's not that they haven't played anybody. It's they've turned somebodies into nobodies. And, you know, you can play in the hindsight game. You know, put up whatever you have. If I were a fan of this team, I would embrace. They turned somebodies into nobodies. This is the best team I've ever covered, Jody. I covered the 98 Vikings, which I think was the best team. Uh, the 2017 Eagles, which won the Super Bowl. This is better. This is this is the best team I've ever covered. This and is an this is a well-rounded machine of a team. 
which we have two weeks to talk about leading up to the Super Bowl. We don't want to uh, lose our focus on what the most important thing is, which is the Kansas Chiefs in 13 days. But I do want to give props to the offseason that Howie Roseman has had to put together the best team that John McMullen has ever seen in your 20 plus years of covering the National Football League. That's uh, a major accomplishment into itself. Uh, we'll, 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 we've got all uh, two weeks to do that. Uh, we need to stick with the game. And yes, John, I was on CBS Sports uh, last night and got a couple of uh, calls, um, one of which was absolutely ludicrous about how poorly Jalen Hurts played yesterday. Excuse me? 31 to 7? He played poorly? Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> that in a second. But the other one was about, as you pointed out, if the referees see the Devontae Smith drop, and yeah, there was a definitive angle and showed the ball hit the ground. They didn't get to it on CBS for about two and a half minutes. The Eagles had already scored a touchdown by the time they showed the play that actually showed that he didn't quite catch the football. So there was no way that Shanahan or anybody else was catching it. It would have had to been a complete field call and Devontae Smith kind of did signify by rushing his teammates up to the line. Yeah, you know, I really didn't catch the ball. So do you want to make that call? Use your challenge on what? The fifth play of the game? And if you get it wrong, it's done and over with. Um, I got a lot to call uh, Kyle Shanahan on the carpet for yesterday. That wasn't at the top of my list that he should have known that Devontae Smith didn't catch the ball. No, the only one in the stadium who knew that Devontae Smith didn't catch the ball was Devontae Smith. That's it. He's the one person who knew. So in major 2020 hindsight, like minutes in a touchdown after, they go, oh, shoot, that ball actually hit the ground. <laughs> Nobody knew uh, except Devontae. So I won't crush Shanahan for that, but that was a major turning point. And if the Official had been in the right position to see the ball at the ground. Fourth down play, 49ers get it back instead. Things might have changed. If Brock Purdy doesn't hurt his elbow on the play that Hassan Reddick got there, beating that backup tight end. Yeah, there's a Shanahan question for you. How the hell do you design a play with a backup tight end trying to block the second best pass rusher in the National Football League this year? What happened to his uh, his uh, offensive genius, Mr. Shanahan? Well, then, yeah, the game could have gone differently. Here's the bottom line, Eagles fans. The better team won the football team game. The better team is advancing to the Super Bowl. The team that was the best in the NFC and the 49ers were damn good. But the best team in the NFC this year is where they're supposed to be in the Super Bowl against the Kansas City Chiefs. And we got a lot of angles to play on that one for the next two weeks as well. That's all that matters. If it might not have been a 30 to 7 beat down domination, so what? The Eagles were going to win the football game yesterday because they were the better football team. And how it actually got the 31 to 7 becomes pretty damn irrelevant because the best team is representing the NFC. In the yeah, I mean, you know, even I got that feeling pretty quickly, Jody. You know, when even before we knew Brock Purdy was hurt and wasn't coming back in the game, you got that feeling, oh, this is going to be really, really tough for San Francisco. Now, I don't think it would have been as bad as it turned out to be, obviously, if, if Purdy wasn't hurt, but they weren't going to win that football game. It was evident that early on. Um, my only criticism of Kyle, and I've criticized Kyle for years as, as a game manager, and you saw it with the three delay of games, um, you know, very similar to Mike McDaniel, except he's been coaching longer and should know better by this point but he gets bogged down in play calling and he's trying to figure out invented run plays because he can't throw the football. And I get all that, but ultimately, so what? Again, you, you either have to understand your job is bigger than play calling. I don't think he understands his job is bigger than play calling. Now on that bang, bang play with Devontae Smith, it's early in the game. So I get what you're saying, Jody, and it is complete hindsight. I'll, I, obviously, I'll yeah, did you that. think it was a non-catch? Did you um, question it? Other I had than, no idea. Other than Devontae getting up and like kind of signaling to everybody to hurry up. Did you have any idea that it wasn't a catch? I had no idea if it was a right. catch or not, because as you point out, the, the, the replays didn't show definitively. What I would have done is either called a timeout and let them look at it a little bit closer, taking some time, 
or thrown the challenge flag for the reason is he doesn't use his timeouts anyway. He's getting delay of games anyway, and it's a first half timeout, which isn't as as important as a second half timeout. Sure. So yeah, I would have challenged the play, or I would have called timeout. So I do criticize him a little bit, but that's you know that's way down on the list of of things that that they lost this game over. Um, but yeah, I mean, in such a big game, yeah, and and, and it's a bang bang play. At the bare minimum, you want them to take a look at it uh, over a longer period of time. And as you pointed out, you should be alerted by the fact that Devontae Smith is trying to hurry up. Now, the Eagles play a lot of tempo anyway. So maybe he got sucked into that and the fact that the Eagles like to go fast. But, yeah, I think I think it's a legitimate criticism of the head coach of the 49ers. Um it, it, you know, when once the quarterback leaves, it, it becomes, and I said this on the on the Jacob Post game show with Seth and Derek and and Mike. Um, I didn't learn that much about the Eagles in this game because at that point it really wasn't a game. So when people say, "Well, Jalen Hurts didn't have play well because he didn't have big numbers," Jody, they're just trying to get out of there. Exactly. Run the football, get out of there, win the game, get to the Super Bowl as healthy as possible. And by the way, they're as healthy as possible. And Kansas City looks really banged up uh, going into – now you have the extra week and then, you know, guys are going to play and all that. But, you know, that's all they're trying to do. Everything's more from a statistic standpoint. So yep. I kind of throw the statistics out just that they dominated the football game. They turned a team that hadn't lost in three months into a nobody. They were a nobody. Yeah, I was joking. It was like watching Navy uh, play play an NFL game. Bad luck that the quarterback got hurt. But guess what? Again, as you pointed out, don't have the backup tight end blocking. I didn't see. I didn't see Grant Calcaterra blocking. Uh, Nick Bosa. Right. I saw Lane Johnson blocking <laughs> Nick Bosa. <laughs> Come on. Exactly right. And just a quickie. Um, as long as we're beating Kyle Shanahan into the ground, easy pickings today. Um, yes, John uh, Josh Johnson comes in. A guy who's changed teams 13 times in his NFL career. There's a reason for that. Uh, he's not going to be rallying the 49ers to a victory. He ends up taking a hit and a concussion and going into the protocol. So they're forced to put Purdy back out there and a couple plays in. You really, He can't even throw the football. They're putting him back in knowing that he can't throw the football. So it was all over. But for the shouting, however, there's still a quarter left to play. It's the first snap of the fourth quarter. It's 21 to 7. Yeah, chances are you're not coming back. They're running it every single down. I even get that. You, you it's uh, pretty told you can't throw it more than two yards. So why would you call a pass play? I get, understand all the. They're going back into the huddle after every single play. Yeah, yeah. Well, They're taking you know. the full thirty-five seconds on every single play. Where is the sense of urgency? You've scored one touchdown in the first three quarters. You need three more to tie at twenty-eight to seven. And you're going to take your sweet time about it? What the hell was that all about, Shanahan? Yeah, I agree. Boy, I I think this was, you know, when we talk about a lot of people are saying, you know, because of the game Hassan Reddick had and and Nick Bosa was shut out by Lane Johnson as the streak continues for Lane Johnson, the amazing streak uh, of not allowing a sack. Um. And, and people say it's disrespect that he's not finalist for defensive player of the year. You know, Nick Sirianni should be disrespected. Kyle Shanahan's a finalist for coach of the year. Yep. And you're right. I mean, you, you're in the NFC championship game. Like, yeah, I know the odds are ridiculously against you, but you gotta, you gotta try, you know, even to the point they were trying to get Christian McCaffrey ready. It looked like Christian McCaffrey was going to come in and play quarterback. Him at Walcott quarterback would have been a better way to go. Um, yeah, I, I did. I thought that was 
that was just an awful performance. Yeah, he did, like he didn't saying. throw the challenge flag on the uh, Devante play. He should have thrown the I surrender flag at that point. If you're not even going to go into a, uh, a fast paced offense, you're going to take your time between play. Yeah. Just well, get, that's beat, the thing the Jody. to the airport, get the hell home to San Francisco. Let the Eagles get on with the celebration. And if I ever, if I ever, you know, you know, me with CEO coaches, I tell you all the time, that's the way I, that's the problem. If I were an owner, uh, yep. I, that's what I would hire is how I describe it. And, um, if, if, if someone asked me why I might show him a tape of this game, because I, I, you know, you know why he had no sense of urgency because he's bogged down because the, the, the worst case scenario confronted him and he didn't have a real quarterback and he is bogged down and he's trying to think of what to do. And he's the head coach of the team. And he can't go and 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 tweak the play caller and say, I I look look, I know we're in a bad situation, but we gotta try. We're in the NFC championship game. We gotta speed up. We gotta show that sense of urgency you're talking about. But he's the play caller and he's bogged down. Um, I would I would put on a tape of this game as to why I believe in CEO coaches. Well, it would, would make the case, that's for damn sure, because uh, Kyle Shanahan was uh, outcoached circles around him by Nick Sirianni, who, as you correctly note, isn't the finalist for the award, but somehow Kyle Shanahan is. Uh, no, the playoffs have no relevancy when it comes to deciding coach of the year. It's purely a regular season award. But in case you ever needed a, a clarification as to the mistake you made, oh, you got it yesterday at Lincoln Financial Field where the Eagles severely outcoached the 49ers. All right, uh, we've got uh, another hour and 40 minutes to spend with you guys today. Uh, we've got two good guests coming, two guys who've been covering Eagles for a long time, much like Johnny Mac. Uh, Les Bowen, uh, a longtime Eagle beat reporter, is going to jump on first. And then in hour number two, we'll get our guy, Chris Franklin, who has been uh, very good to us, jumping on every single Monday for the season, all season long. He'll have the Monday with two weeks lead up to the Super Bowl review show of yesterday's Eagles 31-7 to win at, over the San Francisco 49ers, and it wasn't as close as the final score indicated. It was a beatdown of epic proportions. Yeah, some explanations and some reasons for it from a 49er standpoint, uh, but it doesn't matter now because the Eagles had off to the Super Bowl for the second time in six years. See, John McMullen, I'm Jody McDonald. We are Mac and Mac. Les Bowen, our first guest, is up next here on Birds 360.